whiskey news, uh, or more accurately, whiskey rumor roundup. Whiskey is not like other hobbies. It's weird. The rumors tend to not be rumors because before you release a product, you have to upload the label to a public searchable database. At the end, I'll explain how you can use this to look for things, but it's a little archaic. So if you're on Instagram, just follow the account coming whiskey. It's incredibly up to date. First off, last week, Brown Foreman received approval for the Old Forester 1924. This is a 10 year old bourbon and it is exciting. It doesn't say limited edition so we could see wide distribution on this. And it also doesn't say distilled by Brown Foreman on the back label. It only says bottled by Brown Foreman in contrast to 1910 or 1920. And on the back of the entire Whiskey Row series, there's this little quote that says, this whiskey is distilled by us only. So I guess we'll see. This is the first addition we've seen to their Whiskey Row lineup in a while. It would be extremely exciting if you could find this reliably. In general, Old Forester products are priced really competitively, so I'm excited to see where this lands. Next up, the Maker's Mark 12-year-old. This would be the first age-stated Maker's Mark and the oldest Maker's Mark ever released to the public. Virtually every Maker's Mark is six to seven years old. Fred Minnick has a video of him doing this tasting of old Maker's Mark cask strength. The gorgeous nose. Yeah, the nose is spectacular, isn't it? If we could, if we could borrow this nose and then throw the whiskey away, I'd be perfectly happy. You don't like this whiskey? Not really. See, I'm feeling, I'm feeling this uh, bourbon just completely coat my mouth. You have all been... the caramels and vanillas, like a creme brulee in there, a little roasted marshmallow. How about the tannins? It's not over oak for me. Well, it's not over. I think this would win, do quite well in competition. We only got one bottle left, so <laughs> I don't have to wait send, another six Send it years. to the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Oh, I'd fair. love to. Uh, and later he referred to it as unicorn tears. This isn't cask strength, and it's not what he tasted either. The bottle tag reads cellar aged, which definitely is talking about the cellar that Maker's Mark built in 2016. This cellar was built so they could perform their stave finishing process annually. Previously, they were only able to get the balance right on Maker's 46 during cool winter months and by using barrels from the bottom rows of Rick houses. If temperature swings are too high, the finish just comes off wrong which is why about a year ago we let off three controlled dynamite blast into the hillside and have carved out of the natural limestone shelf the world's first limestone whiskey cellar the cellar has a 2,000 barrel capacity, and previously we thought it just had barrels with stave finishes for Makers 46 or private select store picks, but apparently some amount of this is also filled with the oldest Makers mark on the premise. This will likely be extremely hard to find, but if this came out, it would be a bigger deal than anything they did in the wood finishing series. The Weller Emmer Wheat is the most disliked of any unannounced whiskey I have seen. People's main gripes with Weller seem to be its marked up pricing, lack of availability, and their propensity to keep creating whiskeys even though they can't meet the market demand for any of their single existing products. This Emmer Wheat recipe is the first Weller product to use a fully different recipe, probably? Emmer wheat is an Egyptian ancient grain used in beer and bread, according to the back label. Until this is officially announced, we really can't assume much. Okay, this is a niche one, and I have to be honest, Heaven Hill and I still are not on great terms. I'm not over Henry McKenna 10's price basically doubling while the quality's progressively dropped, and Elijah Craig barrel proof losing the 12 year age statement is still a fresh wound. But. If you're doing a Heaven Hill, you do you bourbon tour, I think it's important to know about their select stock series. I don't know if these have any distribution outside of that program, so let me know if you've ever seen one of these in a bar or in a store. This is an experimental series. Some of these are all over the place, but a couple of the upcoming releases are some of the oldest finishes I've ever seen. These upcoming labels feature brandy and Armagnac barrel finishes, apparently for four years and some change. I mean, these are a coin toss. It could just be bad for how long that's been. Coming out of MGP is a label for a Remus six year, and this is the sleeper of the lineup for me. I don't want this to be hyped. I want to be able to find this for a good price. Six year MGP straight from the horse's teat is the dream. My God, the label looks so much better 
I hate the current label so much, it's just a picture of a guy I don't care about, and it shares no DNA with any of the higher-end Remus offerings. You shouldn't put those bottles together on a shelf. Anyways, one of my biggest gripes with MGP juice is how expensive it has become. The barrel broker and NDP system builds in redundancy that adds to the price tag of every bottle. I've also started to notice in a lot of sourced MGP bottle reviews, I see people saying, well, you can find better MGP for cheaper, and I don't know where you do anymore. I don't know any good budget MGP that carries an age statement. From the innovative minds behind the Jefferson's Oceans comes the Jefferson's Tropics. I'm not going to go deep into this. If you want to know more about this, check out the article from Mike at The Bourbon Culture. It's like the oceans, but they left it at a dock in Singapore for an extended period of time. The heat and humidity likely will make more of a difference than the whole ocean air gimmick ever could, but it's Jefferson's whatever. And the last label, which is probably the most interesting if it gets wide release, Four Roses seems to be releasing shooters. Not gas station yellow label shooters, those already exist. They seem to be doing one for each of their 10 recipes. Four Roses has 10 distinct recipes with varying yeast and rye contents that changes them dramatically. Currently, the only way to collect each of these recipes would be to get store picks or gift shop bottles that are single barrels of those recipes. These Four Roses single barrel barrel proof bottles have become some of the most sought after whiskeys in the modern era. Most people would take any of the gold labels without ever trying the recipe. Now you could actually get an idea of what the recipe is like. This is something I would overpay for. If it came in a set of all 10, I would spend five or $10 a shooter on it. 50 or hundred bucks, no problem. That's so much easier than finding a single barrel proof around us. They're 104 proof and non-chill filtered, so I'm assuming these aren't single barrels, and that's great. Batch the product, create a sample of what the recipe has to offer. If you could order this online, this would be like the hot one set for whiskey nerds. Phenomenal Christmas gift. From Google search, type in TTB Cola search, click the first link, and then go to the blue box. Welcome to this fun interface. You can change the date completed if you'd like, but if you're looking for something within the last year you don't need to then just punch in whatever product you're looking for and BAM a big list of things as you can see most people don't fill out all the information some people like Old Forester will fill out the fanciful name so you can tell what you're looking at and some people like Weller seem to bury their products when you select something, you will have to click on the TTB ID to pull up the full page. And there's no information here. Don't waste your time. Just click printable version. It will open in a new browser. And now scroll to the bottom to see the label. Heads up, proof can be a placeholder and some of these products will never come out. But at the moment, Remus store picks are my favorite MGP for the price. I don't know of any NDP with better MGP than MGP. The MGP won't let me be or let me be me on Tennessee. Hmm.